The Google Pixel tablet makes way more sense than you realize and people are sleeping on it. Let's talk about that. The Pixel tablet is two devices in one, an underrated Android tablet that excels at work and play, and a smart display whose panel absolutely wipes the floor with the competition, all in a device that, in the US, costs just $4.99. For reference, a Nest Hub Max and an iPad Air combo is $750 plus, and good luck getting those two to play as nicely and as seamlessly as this. Google's tablet from a hardware standpoint is pretty well suited to being both products. It has a clean, well-presented front view with a decent webcam for video calls and meetings and a pin-sharp Quad HD IPS screen, which is just as nice for watching cooking tutorials as it is for playing games sat on your sofa or just checking the weather in the morning. This panel is double the resolution of the Nest Hub Max, making it far sharper, not to mention its great viewing angles, brightness, and the fact you can pick it up and move it around. Its 60 hertz refresh rate means it's not as fluid as say an iPad Pro or most smartphones in 2023, but this shouldn't worry you because this thing is far from laggy. This is also helped by Google's second generation Tensor processor, which performs admirably in and out of games, multitasking and general chilling when in tablet mode, and feels lightning quick in docks mode compared to other smart displays because of its overkill processing power relative to its application. It is buttery smooth, so gaming on the go will be no issue if you're so inclined either. The aluminium shell has a grippy textured finish which helps its handleability. It connects to the pretty decent included speaker attachment via the four pins on the back and also charges through this interface. It feels sturdy and well made which helps its handheld experience whilst also looking right at home in, well, your home. I think this porcelain shade gives off a friendlier photo frame aesthetic but the hazel model works if you're into that kind of dark mode. And I think this bezel thickness is just about right at both. It keeps things looking clean whilst also making it easy to pick up and hold without accidentally activating items on the display. The standard stuff like built-in speakers, buttons, fingerprint scanner, battery life, they're all pretty good. There's nothing that stands out as the best in its class, but what it has keeps the thing feeling seamless, smooth and upmarket. The speaker attachment is pretty decent, but it's not as full sounding as the aforementioned Nest Hub Max dedicated smart display, which has far more dynamic range and soundstage, so it can go deeper, higher, and fill the room much more easily. That is more of a stereo with a cheap screen slapped on the front, whereas this is more of a middle of the road Bluetooth speaker come charger with a detachable display and brains, which I think is a worthy trade-off because the screen part is just so much better than the competition. Though saying that, a valid option is actually just to buy additional speaker docks separately and place them in and around your home such as the family room on the sideboard for controlling your smart devices, the kitchen counter for reading recipes or watching something while cooking, and the bedside table for that overkill alarm clock. That way you can move your tablet around and get that deeper sound where you need it. Although at $129 a pop, these speaker docks certainly don't come cheap. When docked or in hub mode as Google calls it, your high-end tablet becomes a high-end smart display. You can cast to it visually or audibly, have it display the weather in its ambient mode, or otherwise just use it like an Android tablet, but in a dock. So shopping, browsing, and using social media work just as well in tablet and hub mode as they do in portable mode, only you don't have to hold the thing up. What makes the Pixel tablet stand out here from other smart displays is that you don't have to interact with the screen, but when you do, you'll be rewarded because it's just such a good panel with plenty of punch behind it versus the usually mediocre panel and low level processor of a standard smart display. It gets better though. If you really wanted to, you could use this as a little game streaming device. Sync up a Bluetooth controller and download your choice of streaming applications. For myself, I like Steam Link because I already have a PC in the house and you can stream the full desktop games from anywhere in the house or you know, if you wanna use the cloud from anywhere on the internet. You do have to have a good either internal network connection or internet connection or both, but either way, you're gonna get a fantastic experience out of something so small that you can pick up and move around with you. You can also depend on Google to support the Pixel tablet for five years from release or until June of 2028. 
Their update policy promises three platform upgrades and five years of security updates, making this a pretty decent long-term solution whether you intend on using it as a perma-docked sort of upmarket smart display or as your main portable for entertainment, or why not both? Look, the Pixel tablet is not perfect. The price outside of the US makes it much less for steel. Some will be turned off by the 60 Hz refresh rate of the display. And Google could do with putting more effort into making its Pixel tablet's Android skin a little more useful for such a large display and make use of that space. But when taking into account its versatility and the market or rather markets in which it sits, Google's onto something here. Why buy multiple products when one can pull double duty? This is the first piece of tech that I've experienced where I can thoroughly enjoy one aspect of it and my partner can enjoy something entirely different about it as if we're talking about two completely different product segments. For $4.99, the Pixel tablet is a killer deal in the US. That's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like and subscribe if you're new around here to not miss the next upload. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.